Now, much has happened since we last gathered here at the Guildhall. From a full-scale invasion, the largest seen in Europe since the Second World War, through to the first coronation in 70 years. I note with pride that riflemen have boldly remained in the vanguard, doubling towards each of these challenges. The changing landscape reminds me very much of my father's early wartime experiences. Deploying to France and Belgium in 1939, he too felt the shockwaves of war on the continent as the army sought to protect our nation and her allies. If he were alive today and serving alongside two rifles in Estonia, or one, three, or five rifles supporting UK Ukrainian troops, I think he'd find the military context and the courage and the good humour of the armed forces all too familiar. I doubt, however, he'd miss his poorly protected armoured car or the army rations of the 1940s. Above all, knowing he did the impact of life on service, <coughs> of service on family and friends, he would be to salute your loved ones who make your work possible and keep the home fires burning. You too are heroes. Nationally, there have been changes to navigate, not least the shape of the crown we so proudly carry on our bugle. I have heard much about our regiment's successes across the globe, but I am yet to be told how it handled marching so slowly down the mall. <laughs> no doubt a greater challenge for riflemen than operations in Eastern Europe. I must say to see 4,000 soldiers, sailors and airmen on parade was quite extraordinary, with three cheers in the garden at Buckingham Palace, which is something I'll never forget. My thanks go out to one rifles and the band and bugles of the rifles for representing the regiment with such pride and distinction. The dashing green tunics were a welcome contrast to all the red coats, lace and frills. <laughs> Now, since the last awards dinner, the rifles have had their own period of evolution too. Three rifles have adopted the exciting new security force assistance role. Four Rangers is now forging a new path, but remains an integral part of the family and one very close to my heart. Thank goodness the powers that be in defence continue to keep rifles at the spearhead, a pioneering trait that we have held since the experimental corps of riflemen adopted the bugle in 1802. Our reserve battalions, six, seven and eight rifles are thriving, and I was particularly thrilled to see that several rifles championed at Bisley last year setting the standard for five rifles to follow. <laughs> Another great change has been the handover of the Colonel Commandant. Having started my journey as a rifleman alongside the then Colonel Patrick, 
we both seem to have been simultaneous, simultaneously promoted through the ranks. <laughs> I have a personal debt of profound gratitude to the now General Sir Patrick for his wisdom and steadfast support to me, first as a Royal Colonel and then Colonel-in-Chief, with many laughs along the way. He has set the bar very close to the ceiling, a challenge that General Tom will, I'm sure, relish as our new Colonel Commandant. <laughs>